What is going on world? What's up YouTube? It's Zero here. Today I'm bringing you guys a brand new Call of Duty video, so let's get into it. So today guys we're going to be talking about Call of Duty franchising and everything we know so far about the league. So let's talk about it. So I'm going to be reading pieces of two articles from Dexterdo. The first one is from Alan Bernal and the second one is from Matt Porter. And as always, guys, both of the links to the full articles will be in the description down below. Activision Blizzard doubled down on their commitment to release more Call of Duty titles throughout the years, even as their pro scene is branching into a franchised system. It's an exciting time for Call of Duty Esports as the parent company is looking to give it the big budget investment into a centralized league, just like they do with Blizzard's popular team shooter with the Overwatch League. Overwatch released in 2016, but even still, frequent hero releases and constant balance changes have kept the game feeling fresh and is a great title to build a whole league around. Activision Blizzard aren't transitioning this model over to the planned franchise league, which will be launching next year, however. The company said in their Q2 investor call that new titles continue to drive the most engagement to the Call of Duty franchise every year. For the parent company, and this will carry through to the franchise era of esports in the title rather than existing as a live service game in the vein of Overwatch. This means that players and teams will have to adapt to new games every fall or however often the new release pattern as has been tradition in the Call of Duty esports space. Of course, the roster mania that occurs may be a little dialed back with franchise teams looking to build brands around their players instead. Millions of players for the series have grown accustomed to playing new titles in the franchise yearly, and it doesn't seem likely that Activision Blizzard are going to be altering course on that anytime soon, judging from their comments today. Modern Warfare is going to be the next tent pole to come out, and so far every review and gameplay clip of the upcoming title has been ramping up the anticipation for its release among fans. The annual excitement for a new COD is to be expected at this point, but Activision Blizzard have a unique opportunity with their upcoming franchised league. New titles have the opportunity to provide the upcoming franchised league with consistent hype, while audiences will, will be intrigued by franchised league to watch the best Call of Duty players compete in those yearly releases. So I think this is... This is going to be huge, guys. I, I really do. I know there's a lot of speculation around the Call of Duty franchising. Lots of people are worried about it. But I'm going to remind everyone that there was a lot of concern and worry about the Overwatch League when it was when it was first announced that they were going into a franchised model in Overwatch. There was so much speculation and so many people that were very concerned that Overwatch, because of the nature of the game, it's kind of a confusing game to understand, and there's just a lot of just things going on all at once in Overwatch. A lot of people thought that, hey, this probably isn't going to go over very well. And look at how it's doing now. It's doing absolutely incredible. And I think every year there's a possibility that the Overwatch League is just going to get bigger and bigger. I'm not expecting it to get any smaller. Why would it? So I think that this franchise model, there's a lot of positives. There's also negatives, of course, but I think that those positives outweigh the negatives. And I think we already saw that with the Overwatch League. And now we're talking Call of Duty here, one of, if not the biggest franchise of all time in gaming, and it's coming to a franchise model. I just don't see how it would not do very well. I do think, however, that you do need to have a lot of, you know, support from other people in the community, that being organizations, advertisers, and such, and I think we very well may see more and more join in after maybe a year of the CDL. And with the release of Modern Warfare, this is a game that I believe is going to continue moving us in a good direction with the Call of Duty franchise, because the franchise was in a very bad place for a few years with the addition of jetpacks and such. Even though there were some people that enjoyed it, I think that now we're moving in a direction since World War II, even though it wasn't received super positively, they were moving in a direction of, of where the fan base wanted, which was boots on the ground that continued into Black Ops 4. Now we're getting Modern Warfare. And I think, guys, that this could be the true flagship title that says, hey, 
we are back. Call of Duty as a whole is back. And now with this franchise league, it's going to be bigger and better than ever. Major changes are coming to Call of Duty Esports, with the game moving to a franchise league model for the 2020 season. Who are the teams and players competing in the inaugural CDL season, and who owns them? Here's everything we know about the franchises. For years, Call of Duty has been an open circuit with any team eligible to compete in the major tournaments which are held across the world. In 2020, that will change as COD moves to a franchised league format with only teams who have purchased a city-based spot able to compete in Modern Warfare. So far, nine teams have signed on to take part in the competition, which will see organizations establish themselves in a city and play home and away games across the season. With Activision selling spots priced at $25 million, it's no surprise that any team who wants to compete has some serious backing behind them, and you can take a look at who is splashing the cash on the franchise spots for the 2020 CDL season. So the teams that are going to start this league, and I know I believe they were saying that they want to get up to like 28 or 32 spots in the CDL, COD New York City, which is of course the sterling equities and, and venture capitalists that own the New York Mets baseball franchise. They're one of them. And then you have COD Atlanta, which is the Atlanta esports ventures. So, so basically you have New York City, Atlanta, Toronto, Paris, Dallas, Florida, Los Angeles, Minnesota, and then a second Los Angeles team. And here's what I will say about the $25 million price to get into Call of Duty Esports. I see where people are coming from when they say that it's just way too expensive for their for, for their esport team or their brand to really get into Call of Duty. But here's the thing, guys. You have to remember that Call of Duty is the biggest, one of the biggest brands in all of gaming, okay? I mean, this is one of the biggest titles out there. And there's really no debate about it. It sells the best every single year when we talk about yearly sales. It is the biggest game every year. So Activision Blizzard, even though they, even though they get a lot of backlash, they're, they are doing something right. They are doing something that is working with Call of Duty. And now going to a franchise-based model, it's similar to that. If you look at other traditional sports like the NFL, NHL, Major League Baseball, whatever it is, those teams and those sports are extremely expensive if, say, you wanted to go ahead and buy one of those teams. I think the idea is here, guys, is when you look at like the NFL or you look at the NHL and you look at those beginnings way back when they started, right? The teams were actually relatively cheap to buy when it first started, and then over time it built out. And I believe that with Call of Duty, Overwatch, and some of these other franchised leagues that are coming out, I believe it's going to be the same thing. I think anybody who is not getting into the Call of Duty franchising because of the price alone, I just think that that's a a bad decision. Now, it's not up to me, obviously, where some of these teams put their money to work, but I would say that Call of Duty is almost like the one of those for sure ordeals, one of those for sure investments that you know you're going to get a return over time because it's proven itself every single year. Now, Overwatch, I could totally see people not wanting to get into Overwatch, but Call of Duty, we are talking one of the biggest brands ever. And I mean, in all of, in all of gaming, why wouldn't you want to kind of go ahead and, and, and Put your stamp there as far as Call of Duty. If I were to invest into a particular franchised league, it would 100% be Call of Duty almost over any other league. League of Legends, that would be a smart uh, investment as well. But Overwatch, I would probably have skipped out on just because I would kind of wait to see where that would go. But Call of Duty, I just feel that there's certainly, there's so much more upside than as far as downside goes with Call of Duty. And I think $25 million, they're saying that over the next 10 years, it could go up to $45 million as far as how much those teams are worth. And I think that's no stretch. I think then in maybe 20 years, it doubles and then, you know, triples, whatever the case might be. I think what we're seeing, guys, in esports right now is the beginning of what could very well be the start of more organized leagues that translate to or compare more so to traditional sports. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's a good thing to have a more traditional type of structure because it's worked for those traditional sports for so long. In esports, I think that we've gotten to a point in which esports is just growing astronomically. You add these franchised leagues, and I think that it could even grow even more. And we already saw that with Overwatch.
Who won't be in the Call of Duty franchise league? While some of esports' biggest names have thrown their hat in the ring for the 2020 season, there are a number of big Call of Duty teams who won't be participating in the competition. The most surprising, though, was 100 Thieves considering CEO Matt Nadeshot Hag, legendary career as a COD professional. In a video released on August 29th, he cited the incredible cost of owning and running one of the teams, alongside the fact that they would have to alter their brand as reasons for the team's decision to pass on the league, at least temporarily, with Nadeshot expressing his sadness that they won't be involved from the start. And as I said, guys, I do. it's unfortunate that 100 Thieves is not going to be representing a, a team within the CDL, but I think that Nadeshot, I, if, I, if you were to ask me, I, I think he is going to, you know, regret not getting in on it right away. And I do think that there's a chance that maybe sometime as they see how the call, how the CDL does, I think there's a good chance, especially after that first year, if it does really well, teams like 100 Thieves very well might get back into Call of Duty. And I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. It's either going to make Nade Shot and 100 Thieves look really good, or it could go the other way and not look so good as far as, you know, not taking a risk on the investment. But I think that either way, the, either way you look at it, I do think that the Call of Duty World League is almost a, a for sure thing, or the CDL is a for sure thing as far as just Call of Duty, it's going to be fresh every year, you're going to have a new game every year, and I think that's a very, you know, as far as keeping things fresh in the CDL, it's going to be pretty easy because you have a new game coming out every year, and then Roster Mania might be you know, might might still heat up at times, but I just think that there's going to be a lot of hype, and I think that a lot of these players that are involved inside of the league have huge followings, and I think that's also going to help the CDL just be bigger and bigger over time. I would say that in the first year, I think it's going to have better numbers than Overwatch did its first year, but that's just me and my and my thought on it. If I were investing in one, into one of these franchised leagues, Call of Duty would be at the very top, and it's not even close. But let me know what you guys think about the Call of Duty Franchise League. Are you guys skeptical about it? Are you concerned about it? Seeing as how some of these big brands are not getting uh, not getting involved into the Franchise League. What do you guys think? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Subscribe if you're new. Stay positive. And as always, I'll talk to you guys all in the next one. Peace.